This is my 4 inch telescope and I've recently purchased the adapters to mount a digital camera to the end of it. Now the problem with this is that this camera is about three times as heavy as your normal eyepiece here so that's pulling it down a bit more and this extension tube which I need for focusing distance is putting that weight farther out. So this guy used to balance where the Vixen mount is but now it's going to balance somewhere closer to here and so to have this work with my mount I need to move this guy down. So what I'm going to do is unscrew this screw, loosen this guy, I'm just going to swivel it around and tap a single new hole over here so I can share this mounting hole. We'll flip this around to the other side, mount it in here, and so that way the center of gravity of this guy will work with the camera. Now the center of gravity or the mounting point used to be right at this end, so by flipping it around I'll still be able to mount it there when I have an eyepiece on it and it'll still work but I'll give myself a little more room so that when the camera is mounted I'll be able to have this thing nicely balanced in my mount. To make this easier to work with I'm going to take off the whole focusing tube assembly. There's three screws I unscrew and take this thing off and I just have to remember that you know the Vixen mounts here and I want the um, focusing knob and this finder scope kind of on this side with the Vixen mount when I put that back on. Just using a 5 millimeter hex tip on these guys here. Alright, I'm just using the curvature of the tube here and that thing to hold this mount in approximately level. I'm trying to get this as close to aligned with the tube as possible. I'm going to be using a square to check things out, but mostly the Vixen mount when tightened up against that cylindrical tube will mostly square itself. So I'm going to just tap a hole right in here. I'm hopeful this Sharpie will reach all the way down. And yes it did. So the bolts on my particular Celestron Omni AZ-102 have a 1.0 thread pitch and they are M6 1.0. And I verified this by screwing this guy into my M6 by 1.0 die and then also taking the M6 by 1.0 tap and kind of screwing it into the existing hole. So you could tap and drill this hole for any bolt you happen to have that would fit in that opening. Um, but I really like the idea of reusing the existing bolt um, just so I can swap it back and forth without swapping out different bolts. Um, I'll probably eventually buy one of these that's super short just to plug that hole. Um, either that or put a piece of black electrical tape over the hole. So this hole I'm going to be drilling and tapping is on the inside of the internal baffle in there. So any debris is going to fall down where I can easily get it out. If it was into that baffle there, I'd probably want to put like pieces of paper or cloth or something to catch it so I could pull it out um, easily. But in this case, I'm probably just going to let all settle down there and then vacuum it out um, just from the opening I have here. So some telescopes would have a super thin tube and behind this would be a backing plate, either two plates or one solid plate, where if you took those screws out it would fall out into the telescope. Um, here it's a thick, well thickish aluminum tube um, and they're just tapped and drilled directly into the tube. So we're just going to add another hole just like these two right there. And you can see here if I go down the center line of these two existing holes, it's nicely lined up with my mark that I made using the Vixen adapter there. I have this guy clamped in my vise vertically so that all the debris I make drilling through here and tapping is going to fall out the bottom so gravity will help me keep that out of the optics. So for an M6 by one tap we want a five millimeter drill. I don't actually have metric drills, so a 3 16 is as close as I can get underneath, which is 4.75. Because this is aluminum, I'm not too worried about going a quarter of a millimeter shorter. My next one up is 5.16 millimeters, which is a 13 64 And then we're going to try tapping that, because with a steel tap and aluminum, I figure I can go through a little thicker there.
for ease of tapping I've turned this over this way. You want to make sure you have that fixed in there good so it doesn't fall over. Well, I have it tilted up just slightly so gravity is going to still kind of keep things going off that way. Yeah, and tapping aluminum is always a joy compared to steel. We definitely want to make sure we don't leave any shavings inside the optical tube. All right, and there we have a threaded hole. This feels just slightly looser than the factory hole. Perhaps their tap is a better quality or a better match for the particular screws they're using, but um, it's definitely going to hold things in there. So this guy used to be here. I'm just going to move it down here. You know, you could swivel it, but I'm just keeping the bite marks on the same side of my uh, dovetail here. And for the exposed screw hole, if you happen to have an easy source for a M6 by one black anodized socket head cap screw that's probably you know three millimeters tall, um, you can buy one and then screw it in there. Or I just put a piece of black electrical tape over that guy. I line my focuser assembly back up with the Vixen mount the way I want it, and now I just have to put these three screws back in. The star diagonal on eyepiece is 193 grams. Okay, so we've moved this guy from here back to there. Now I have my lightest eyepiece and star diagonal installed right now. And you can see if I hold it right here, it's just slightly nose heavy. So that, you know, my mount can handle a little bit of that. If it becomes an issue, I could always put a counterweight here. But realistically, I'm going to have that camera mounted on this most of the time. Um, and so then with the camera, I can mount it closer to the back of this guy. Camera is 588 grams. So with the camera attached, the balance point is right about there, so just about the center of this fixin. Now, if you wanted, you could buy a 8-inch Vixen dovetail and mount an 8-incher here to give you a whole bunch more adjustability. Or, you know, kind of the real solution is to buy a set of rings with a, a uh, dovetail on it. But a set of rings for this scope is probably going to be 60 to 100 bucks with a dovetail. Um, so this way, it's basically if you have the taps and the drills, you can just move this guy around.